Welcome to the Dice Tower, a podcast all about board and card games and the people who play them. Today's episode, number seven, is part of our classic series and was originally aired June 27th, 2005. This week's episode of the Dice Tower is brought to you by Tenki Games, publisher of Chang Chang, the first game in which you really build the Great Wall of China. To discover all the features of Chang Cheng, go to www.tenkigames.com. And now, here's your host, Tom Vassell. Well, hello, folks. This is Tom Vassell. Thanks so much for joining us today. What we're doing now is we're looking at part two of our Origins preview of 2005. Now, you think that that's probably not worth a whole lot. But it is interesting to see our own opinions on Origins, and there's even some opinions of mine that I really have changed since on this show. And there's uh, a couple things I want to talk about. In the middle of the show, there's a episode where we have a, a phone calling, and at this point in time, we were still using a, f- a program which, once we stopped it, we were done. And I didn't, so we just had to go with the flow, and Joe was a bit flummoxed as he tried to. Uh, come up with something to talk about why I answered the phone. But I will say that it's uh, we eventually got away from that. Now we can pause and I do all kinds of editing. But enough of that. Let's see what Origins 2005, what we thought it was going to be like. And at the end I have some comments that I like to make about um, just basically some retrospect on how I actually ended up looking at the show. Well hello, this is Tom Vassell. And I'm Joe Stedman. And this welcome to the Dice Tower. Yes. This is our seventh episode. Man, it's been so long since we've done an episode, Tom. Yeah, it's been at least three, three minutes. minutes, I think. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, this is uh, a board game show about, well, board games. Yeah. Uh, Euro games, American games, war games. We talk about miniatures, collectible card games, and RPGs in a, to a lesser degree. Right. It's mostly about board games. We usually just make fun of CCGs. Yeah, that, that's true. But we do, I do enjoy playing them often uh, but this is the second part of a show about origins origins is a board gaming or no, i'm sorry just a gaming conference in columbus ohio and it's held from june 30th to july 3rd this is the day well when this is being posted this is the day before it starts yeah so i'm probably on a plane flying to america it's the day before it starts i am in adrian michigan right now uh, visiting my in-laws, I mean, in-laws, I'm sorry, my wife's, I mean, I'm sorry, no, my sister's, my sister and her family, and my wife will be dropping me off at the airport soon. So <laughs> we hope that you're on your way there, too. We hope to see you there, but either way, for those people left at home, we're still glad that you're listening to the Dice Tower. Yeah. Okay. Now what are you doing, Tom? I'm trying to play the sound effect for the Dice Tower, but it apparently just messed up. <laughs> hope it didn't script the whole computer. Nope, we're still recording. Hmm. Well, anyway, what we did last time is we started going through the pre-registration book, and last time we found out the horrible news that Richard Berg, famous war game designer, would not be at Origins. Yeah. So we made. The I, page. Might just can- I might just cancel my whole trip now. <laughs> was the only- I'm not sure that we'll do that. I can't believe this program is. Real play is just not a good program. That's the second time now it's jammed up on me. You want to start over? No, 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 we're going to go on. <laughs> the show must go on. Um, I will work on it while we go through. All right, so this time, last time we talked about our five best games we played last time. This time we're going to talk about five things that you should see at yeah. Origins. You should go check these in, places in, out. In our humble opinions. Don't you love it on the internet? People write that I am in my humble opinion. Right. Uh, <laughs> my opinion is not humble. Do what I say or, you don't, or, or you're a moron. <laughs> I'm glad you finally said that out loud. See, that's the way Joe thinks I'm, I, I talk to him. He's a very domineering kind of guy. See, the reason Tom and I are friends is because we're both domineering guys, and we're the first people we've met who don't let each other be dominated. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Man, that's a lot. All right, I got the dice tower thing to work. Give me a heart attack. <laughs> All right. Okay, we're feeling better now. Okay, well, we're on page 26 here in this pre-registration book, and it talks about feature artists. Uh, Andy Hopp is the guy who drew, drew this hideous apparition uh, on the front of the sorry, book. Sorry, Andy. <laughs> Andy, we apologize for hating your work. But it stinks. <laughs> I'd rather look at, uh, you know, Picasso. Now, the other thing, there's a little advertisement here. Do you know anything about this? It's called Lensman. Phil Pritchard's Lensman. It says the 1969 classic, Reborn, and it's a space war game. 
Do you know anything about it? Uh, I can't say that I do, honestly. It's a war game, though. I don't know. Maybe I'm just showing my ignorance here. But I guess you'll have to. to I'm only check, 31 years old. Check out this this website and see what you think of it. 69. You know, that's the year my parents graduated. Never high mind. School. I'll check it out. You're going too slow. <laughs> the wait, what is it called? Lensmangame.com. A war game. All right. So let's turn the page because. Oh. Okay. Oh. Well, I can't type. Is the internet out? No, it's not out. I just okay. couldn't type. Keep going. Art show. Are you gonna do that? I might. I might actually stop by this year and check out the the miniatures table where they have the they have in the convention center. They have like a, a miniature. Or is it a convention or in the, over in a, the miniatures uh, arena where they have the painting? No, it was in a little room that was across from one of these things. They had some paintings. I went and glanced at them. No, 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 no. Not the paintings. I thought the paint the paintings of miniatures, where you could paint your own miniatures and they. Would no, that there. was in the middle of the dealer's room and that will still be there. That was really cool because they had some uh, supposed experts giving lessons and. They had some contests for painting. I like to paint miniatures. I'm not that good, but I like to do it. And actually, I just took some pictures of some miniatures I painted. I'm going to post them up on my webpage because I just want to. <laughs> Did you actually go do it last year? No, I, I just I, I watched over the shoulder for Joe's, about Joe's minutes. not a beginner, so he was like, huh, well, whatever. Yeah, Damn well, this is, is how you base code, right? So. <laughs> okay, here's, here's the webpage about this Lensman game. It says, the 1969 classic. I guess it was a classic, though. You think we would have heard of it? Uh, uh, maybe. Two versions of the game. Three levels of complexity from beer and pretzels to no, campaign Kool-Aid Kool and pretzels. It says Origins. We had five demo and playtest sessions at Origins 2004. Now, do you think that these guys, these uh, companies... Do you think we would have seen that? I don't remember it. Well, let's look at their schedule for this time. Can you get any pictures of the games? I'm looking. You think... That you, you think... Uh, also, guys, this is a picture, you know. Anyway, I was thinking about this. Do you think that these small companies make their money back by renting these booths? Actually, I've asked some of them that in my interviews. Do you yeah. want to know the answer? Yeah, I do. Go read the interviews. <laughs> no, I'm not going to read your thinking. They flood my, my mailbox. <laughs> no, I, I think most of them say that they don't make the money from going. When they sell the games, they may pay their cost of being there. Their airline maybe, tickets dinner. But it's just getting their, out to the public that they're in existence. Getting the name out, right? They said that the most important... One of the most important I mean, shows for them to go to is the Gamma Trade Show, where actual retailers will come in. Right. That's more important than us. But they still want to... Remember, we had this conversation last year. We saw one of the independent companies was just kind of sitting there, kind of being grouches. And we were thinking, why in the world aren't they trying to sell their game or out there talking to people or having a good attitude, at least? I, I remember that. I don't remember who it is, and it's probably best... That, yeah, it's probably best we don't. I was like, man, the, yeah. what idiots. <laughs> All right, well, I, this site has nothing about the game. There's no pictures or nothing. So, Phil Pritchard, if your game is such a classic, what? Well, I guess we can go always go look at Board Game Geek, which there, is there you go. the site. All right, what's the name of that game now? Lensman. Um, Lensman? I'll just put it Lens in Board Game Geek, which will pull up everything with it. There it is, 1969. Well, oh. you know, that's what they said in the article. They have the date right. No, no picture. Image. <laughs> I thought it was a classic. Come on. What are the comments? No personal comments. This one is second edition, black and white graphics. <laughs> Quite rare. There's no reviews, no comments. No nothing. wonder I've never heard of it. Well, folks, we'll check it out for you. <laughs> but I'll get you the scoop. It's a war game, though, so I'll probably look at it and go by. <laughs> oh, look, you can get the, you can, you can join the newcomers program at, at Origins. What is that? I don't know. <laughs> I guess it's for people who says if you're new to hobby gaming. Is that like the thing they had last year for the spouses? I, I disagree. I, I maybe Origins won't like me for saying this. I don't think you should do a newcomers thing. I think you should just go out and look around yourself. Jump in with both feet, huh? Look, there are people out there who will gladly let you join them in gaming. You walk up to someone and say, hey, you mind if I join? And if they kind of snarl at you, then you don't want to play with them anyway. Go. Yeah, but okay, I know I'm going to get snarled at for saying this, but when I walked around the open gaming over into Euro games, I just kind of, I didn't get a good vibe. Well, there's, there's a reason for that. They knew who you were. Uh, I guess I didn't see my name tag. <laughs> it's a Joe Manny man, it's me on it. I did have quite a few okay, people say. I guess, I guess though, I think that most people don't actually say, join us. The dealers will. You do. Well, that's because I'm, yeah, that's true. We were trying to get people to play memoir. Yeah, we were like begging people. I was like, here, I'll pay for you to play the game. I got <laughs> the a coin. generic tickets, right. But, uh, no, I think people aren't normally outgoing and saying, join us. But I think if you walk up and ask to join, they'll say yes. Yeah, but some personality types just don't allow them, them to do that. Well, I can do how that. How is joining just... the newcomers program going to help? Because it, it, it's like the forced dating thing. Okay, well, have. let's look at the board games. 
Pirates Cove. That's a good game. Purple pirate ships don't do Scrabble. that. Scrabble. Who goes Origins to play Scrabble? Scrabble players. Siege Stones. That's an abstract game. The Big Idea. Oh, that's a pretty fun party game. That's one of the Chia Pass games, right? Right. That's our end joke here. <laughs> well, I, we don't know about the newcomers because we're experts. Ooh, we're old that's veterans. That's we have the radio show. Oh, we're old veterans. This is our seventh show. <laughs> we're, we've been on the air for seven shows. For uh, That's more than a lot of TV shows. That's, that's better than a lot of reality shows nowadays. Nine <laughs> weeks. And we haven't voted either anyone off yet. <laughs> Although we got pretty close. <laughs> and two minutes ago. You're off Joe, the island. All right, the next thing is more interesting is a teacher's hall pass. Now, we both got it last year because we thought it'd be really cool. Um, was it as cool as we thought? What did we get for it? I don't remember. I think a couple of companies gave us a discount. An educational discount. Right. So if you're a teacher, check that out. I think it's like half of 1% off. Well, <laughs> <laughs> no, the, actually, the, the coolest thing about the teacher's hall pass is you can get in for free if you're a teacher. No, I don't think so. Yeah. Are you sure? That's how I got my. No, we didn't. We paid for ours. We paid for it. But we would have got them for free. It says right here um, the teachers who bring their a teacher's ID or teacher's license, uh, who bring them, get a free four day general admission badge and a THP ribbon, a teacher's hall pass. Dude, I'm bringing my, my ACSI certification and my Wisconsin State certification with me, man. Now they have a guest of honor, Dr. Toy, Dr. Auerbach. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. Never really There's a teacher lounge. Now, I had to go hunt this thing down because I thought teacher lounge. Who is it? Like old coffee cups in there with half drink and coffee? And you know, what did they have? But Poorly copied photo, there was like photocopies a couple, of tests and stuff. There was a couple crackers in there. <laughs> Ashtrays. And a couple of weird teachers in the corner, so I thought. It's like high school. <laughs> I, I, I kind of I kind of had it out there. The educational discounts, I don't know. Uh, I think maybe people treat you with respect when you're a teacher, but all those rebel people who hate at school, and I see the teacher coming up to come play a game with them. Like, don't let him join our game. Yeah. I, it was a cool teacher hall pass, but I don't think it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. Actually, I don't really think sliced bread's that good. I like the homemade bread, personally. I slice yeah. it myself. Yeah, you're right. How about sliced cheese? <laughs> uh, I like slicing my own cheese. You cut your own cheese, Tom. Turning the page? <laughs> I guess we should do our number five. All right. I'll the number five thing that you should see. Uh... Oh, I Joe's thinking, I know mine, is the Fantasy Flight games, they have a demo section. In the, in the one hall, the miniature hall, they have their own section of demo games. And last year they had Lord of the Rings, War of the Ring, way before it was out. They have all kinds of people there from the company willing to teach you. Christian Peterson, Kevin Wilson, and a lot of other people there to teach you the games. And Once whether, again, whether got... you may like them or not, Fantasy Flight games are cool. I got a weird vibe from Fantasy Flight, too. Like, I don't know. Maybe this year I shouldn't wear a name tag. Yeah, I think you should call yourself, like, Joe uh, Smith. <laughs> Joe Smith. Ooh, let's switch name badges and see what happens. <laughs> you, you, you couldn't handle it, man. <laughs> anyway, okay, my number That's five. That's to do, though, when we first get there. We meet new people. <laughs> no, because you get that stupid cartoon picture face all over the Internet. Oh, that's true. And I don't look anything like you, thank the Lord. All right, anyway. Number five for me would be the auction. Now, there's been some debate about the auction, but we're pretty sure they're having another auction this year. Um, it's not the, it's not the days of old like you'll hear some of the guys on Consim talk about when they had the best auctions ever. I don't know what days of old is. <laughs> and the, they had the best auctions, and the game guy who was selling the games knew everything about every game. I wish Jet Joe wouldn't even be talking about this because I don't want you to go to the auction. Right. Because I want to get the price, the games for a good price. I got some good games at the auction. I got Upfront. I got Omega Virus. I got three or four games. Didn't you pick up a couple games too? I got that fairy game. <laughs> It was some fairy What do you say? Elixir. What? Elixir. <laughs> okay. Right. You like the elixir. I like elixir, but I don't like fairies. That's good. <laughs> anyway. But, you know, it was it was a fun event. My my I they have these huge piles of games and they kind of go through them haphazardly. No, the like, thing was last yeah, year. Yeah, this game looks good. It's a Mayfair last game. Last year they, and... they got some kind of controversy because Ohio state law requires they be an official auctioneer. Yada yada, the unions and everything else. And this guy knows nothing about board games. He knew nothing about board games. So he would pick up like this mint copy of like Titan, still in shrink wrap, and say, "Well, what's this? 25 cents? What's 25 cents?" And then like the guy who was handing him the games would like elbow him and say, "No, no, say 100 bucks." You know, so really, it was it was funny. So it was definitely, I think it was a buyer's market last year. So, I I don't think it. You get great deals there. I think you'll get good deals. Hey, you don't Do got to pay. Oh, I think so. But you don't got to pay shipping and handling. 
And for someone who lives overseas, man, you should. That's what I liked. Well, the ticket to come is not. Oh yeah, I, you know, pay 750 bucks for ticket for, for shipping and handling. <laughs> the auction was 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 a fun. It's just fun to be an auction and kind of you know, uh, wipe your nose and oh okay over there five dollars. <laughs> it was fun. I mean, the other thing I didn't like was this used game dealer was sitting there and he kept buying every game. Oh yeah, that, that guy. I, I finally said to him, he was sitting in front of us. I was like, he was buying every game and he was driving up the prices. I finally tapped him on the shoulder. I said, hey dude, how about letting some of us uh, peons get a game? And he's like, he was really cool. He's like, oh, sure, if you want a game, just tap me on the shoulder and I won't bid. Unfortunately, I had already left at that point. And so I, later on, I, sure enough, up front came up. I tapped him on the shoulder. He didn't even bid. Boy, I'm so, so tempted to talk about Thieves of Baghdad. But let's move on <laughs> to the kids' program. Inside joke. Kids' program is for kids. I, I, I just had this exploring tendency. I went and looked at every part of Origins, and I actually went and looked in the kids' room. You can leave your kids there. And they had a whole bunch of games there with, with people... <laughs> I guess there were some people watching the kids. It looked it looked pretty good, but I still don't think I'd ever take my kids. Was origins. there was there a bunch of Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh players in there? No, they were playing like <laughs> mousetrap type games, maybe. I don't know. Or some of them were just running around. But if I ever take my kids to Origins, I would take them with me and have them game with me because I think if I, they were old enough to take to something like that, they would be old enough to play the kind of games that I'd be interested in. Uh, see, that's one advantage you have. My kids got to be at least 12, 12 and over. <laughs> well, that's what I'm talking about. I don't think I would take a kid to Origins before 12. Maybe 7 or 8. But even then... No, nah, kids stay home. I don't want to discourage kids to stay home. I want kids to get involved in the hobby. Kids though. stay home. I don't... Uh, kids come. Kids stay home. The spouse and value program. Spouse stay home. Because <laughs> <laughs> we really, there's no such thing as Origins, honey. It's just like this big four-day weekend party that Tom and I go to. No. <laughs> Win big, live large. Here's an advertisement for the Marvel Versus system. You can win ten thousand dollars, I guess, if you win. That's not. That's not jump change. I thought Mr. Uh, what's his name? Kingpin. I thought Kingpin was black. You're thinking of the movie. Oh, that's right. In the movie, he's black. Well, that's what goes to show you don't watch the movie. You don't like that movie? Oh. It was Daredevil, right? Yeah, but it wasn't as good as the comics. I thought it was pretty good. Hey, look, here's more of that artwork. Oh, look, you can tell by the big noses. What is... I'm just going to start drawing nonsense and getting it... Get money for it. Money for it. Although this this artist on the other page is pretty Ooh, good. Oh, yeah. That is nice. We have... Uh, here it talks about the different program tracks that you can take. I don't like tracks because they lock you into something. I like to do what... My, my tracks usually called the Vassal track. <laughs> no thanks. Uh, so the first track is called Twist in Time. Uh, it's, I guess it's about time travel. There's GURPS, uh, the what if scenarios. It's all, it all looks good, but I don't think we're going to do any of that. Speaking of that, are there, how many war games do you own that are uh, not real? What They're not mean? based on a real battle. They're based on a what if scenario. The, not, not a what if scenario that could happen in them, because that's a lot of not, things. Not many. I'm talking about it. the whole game is based on maybe. Three or four? <laughs> I can mean, you name same. one off the top of your head? How about Forges America? Okay, that there you go. What else? Uh, Soroko. What's that one about? It's just generic fighting. You know, like the gray team versus the brown team. But don't you think it'd be interesting to play like a World War II game that happened if you know if Patton had been allowed to do what he? Well, they have the game. It's called Red Star, White Star. I have that game. So that's one. Yeah, but it, it, that game is, is is pretty cool. Yeah, in that game it's battle for Germany, but once the Germany collapses, then the American player takes on the Russian player. So do you think that there is a uh, market for this type of thing? I don't know. Do we need to see more uh, things like that? It'd be a very small market. I think the biggest market is just historical gaming. This episode of The Dice Tower is sponsored by Tenki Games, makers of Chang Chang, a strategy board game set in ancient China. Take the role of one of the Chinese officers commissioned to build the Great Wall of China and compete with the other players to protect the most valuable Chinese provinces while gaining the favor of the emperor. But pay attention, as the Mongols are already at the borders. Will you be the most clever and skillful? Check it out at www.tenkigames.com. Hey, Joe, what's on your wrist? A POW bracelet. And well, what? <laughs> today's Memorial Day. And it... No, today's not Memorial Day. Today is, today <laughs> oh, is June, oh, right. June 29th, uh, June 25th. <laughs> uh, we're we're in space-time distortion. We don't know where we are. 
No. But I, I thought that we should we should say something for our yeah. Trips it's today. Today is actually more Memorial Day. We're 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 you know we're pre-recording our shows, and uh, every Memorial Day I break out my POW bracelet. I got a MIA bracelet. It's a guy named John Huntley. He was shot down in Laos in 1969, and uh, you know I'm a veteran, so I take Memorial Day very serious. And there's a lot of people who don't, and that just bugs me when I when people don't even realize the reason we have the holiday. I mean, it's great that you can have barbecues and everything, but you should take at least a minute. And uh, and take some time to thank a veteran or or you know just pray for the for the widows and for the families and you know there's a lot of people even today that are on the front lines. And, and as this show is coming out, the Fourth of July is coming out, and we know we have a lot of international listeners who are, are listening to the show, and 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 we are thankful. I'm sure you're thankful for the holidays in your country. Sure. But as Americans, we just like to give a shout out over the. Because like like Eric, our, he likes Bastille Day. <laughs> but we just like to give a shout out to our to our troops and just the troops of all the countries who keep yeah, peace I mean, peace across the world. We are Americans, and so at least I am American. I'm an American who lives in Korea. <laughs> there, we're expats. All right. So I just thought I mentioned that. Thanks. Sorry to go off track, but it reminded me here of the history. So that's one track. What's his other track? Ooh, you can even watch movies. A Knight's Tale. That's a good movie. Now, why am I going to go to Origins to watch a movie? Yeah, I agree. Why would I watch a movie? Just skip these pages. We're not going to do this stuff. All right. And I don't think most of our audience is going to be Superhero subjects. Because there's six guys that listen to our show, and I know all six personally. <laughs> <laughs> and they're not going to do this. All right, moving on. National Security Division. Hey, can I take a rabbit show? Making it looks, game. It, it looks like they're going to lynch me up in my werewolf game. Okay. Finally, something is happening. That's right. Because Joe is up. <laughs> <laughs> Joe just so certain at all. That sounded bad. <laughs> okay. My fist. And that's then. What is this N NSDM thing? Have you did you do that last time? No, but I, I saw it. So what is that? Is that an actual? They try to actually do a real simulation? Yeah, it's it's like role playing mixed with war games. Looks like they're doing Korea. Well, that's not very enjoyable. <laughs> they're just doing the whole east. I wonder if they have a Tom Vassal counter. <laughs> Tom Vassal flees to the south. <laughs> Gets well, an airplane to America. Joe Stibben Connor, he, he starts World War Three. <laughs> All right. Oh, okay. Team Titan CCG. I'll buy it first. No. Okay. Then there's a whole bunch of pages here about special events, um, live action. All right. While you're going through, so I'll do to my number two. Yeah. I number, mean, to my number four. Number four, I hope. My number four thing to see this year, uh, I would recommend, is the used game stores. There's two or three outlets in the convention. Most of the stuff in the convention hall is for new games, new manufacturers, publishers. But there, are, there are two or three um, used games places. There's um, what's that? What's there? There's Titan Games, and then what's that other? Crazy Ivan, right? Is that what it was? Crazy Ivan, I, I remember that. Anyway, the, the, these guys sell um, copies of the out of print old war games and Euro games. They have a lot of Euro games too. Old CCGs, anything you think of the old stuff. And they, you know, they, there's a slight markup, but it's it's where you get those games that you can't buy anywhere else. And so I had a good time just going through all the old games. And I was able to find a few uh, hidden gems mixed up in his shelves that I think I got a pretty good deal on. So I would, it's just kind of neat to see the thousands of copies of all these games that you can only find on eBay just sitting around. Yeah, I, I thought I didn't find anything I was particularly looking for. I did at the auction, but I did look... And it is cool to see piles of games. Yeah. Uh, my number four thing that I say you should check out is Rio Grande. Rio Grande had a section of uh, demo games going all all day. And early in the morning, you can go play games, and then they had a section in the dealer's room. Then you could go out and play games. And I asked Jay Tumbleson, the president of Rio Grande, if they were going to do it again, and he said yes. And so you will definitely see me there. I have to play all these new Spiel des Jours nominees, and I have to play my newest Carcassonne. <laughs> Speaking of which, Joe, this is exciting for you to know, but I am getting Carcassonne Princess of the Dragon expansion no, on Thursday, and I'm going to try and talk you guys into playing one last huge Carcassonne game. Oh man! But this one actually, the, the dragon lets you destroy stuff. Uh, I have no idea. I have no interest in it. Oh well. Anyway. Come on, a, a princess and a, and a dragon. What's a princess do? I don't. It protects you from the dragon. I don't remember. I haven't read all the rules. So that's my number four, is Rio Grande. And the guys at Rio Grande are just great. Even Joe was there, so he can't. He went and played these games. Yeah. Of course, that's because there wasn't much going else on at that time. It was free. All right, seminars. I didn't go to a single seminar last time. 
But I, you know, I might this time, but it, it is hard to sit in a seminar when you think. I could be playing games. I could be gaming. <laughs> <laughs> but there are some seminars here that people might find interesting. Are we fanatics, or is that normal? I don't, I'm curious to know how many people go to these seminars. They have them here in two different colors, green and not green. And the green ones are all that Origins Wargaming College. But I picked some seminars that I, I would go to if I wasn't gaming. And it's, if I'm free, I'll go to them. This one here says gender in gaming, the rules and perceptions of women in gaming. And this is something curious I've been asking in my interviews. Why aren't there more women who play games? Our wives play games a lot. My wife loves playing games. Of course, my wife doesn't drop everything to play games when I might. I, I think my wife's the opposite. My wife would rather play games more than I do. Uh, are you sure about that? Well, she's a gamer. She has a gamer's heart, but unfortunately, we don't like the same type of games. So we have to find games that are middle ground. Like right now, we've been playing Battle Line a lot because I like that game and she likes it. And we, we're about 50. So what Joe needs here is Euro games that have soldiers. <laughs> <laughs> Memoir 44. Hey, here's one for you. Hosting and building a uh, model United Nations conference, also known as MUN. No thanks. I did MUN already once as a teacher. I don't want to do it for fun. <laughs> so you don't think that that would be fun? No. Oh, well. What, so, writing resolutions? That's real fun. Here's one. Making a flux mobile. <laughs> I guess that's, isn't that the best use of a flux? I, I, I would have to agree. With look, that. look, kids, as, uh, as I lay you down to sleep, you can look at random things. Maybe you'll go to sleep in five minutes. Maybe you'll go to sleep in two hours. We don't know because it's all random. <laughs> How about this one? Running a small games company. I'd be interested to see what they say about that. Not that Joe and I are planning on starting our own small games company. Maybe we will. What do you think? Okay. <laughs> we can export and import Korean games. Yeah. We, Joe says maybe we will until his wife listens to the show. And then she <laughs> says no. True enough. Oh, I love this one. Monopoly strategy. <laughs> what? What? Here, folks, I'll tell you a monopoly strategy. Buy the oranges. They're the most landed on properties on the board. There you go. And don't sell. Buy the oranges. Don't trade. And if you can't get the oranges, get the reds. Don't be generous. Don't ever be generous. And don't play with free parking. No free parking. Well, that was easy. Yeah, that, there you go. Monopoly strategy. You don't have to go to the section now. You heard it from us. Or the other monopoly strategy is just don't play the game. Oh, take the top hat. I hear the top hat wins more. Doesn't it? I always use the little dog. <laughs> or the gun. You can shoot the other people. Yeah, actually, I do use the gun. All right. Scenario design for electronic and board war games. It's actually a hobbit. That's what Joe needs to go to. Scenario design for war games. What? Scenario design for war games? I don't know. How about this one? Meeting of the minds. Game designers and teachers roundtable. So we all sit around and the teachers say, I have a good educational game. And if it's a good game designer, they'll say, shut up. I have a fun game that's more important than being educational. There you go. Games can be educational. In fact, I'm running a seminar on that later on this year. But education is, frankly, the second thing a game should shoot for, not the first. You need to be, a game needs to be fun. Can you run another game convention, Tom? I mean, another uh, seminar? Yeah, I'm doing it at that Thailand conference we're going to. You got approved on that? No. I just assume they will. <laughs> they probably will because you're so famous. No, they probably will because they probably don't get a whole lot of submissions. <laughs> <laughs> no one wants to run a seminar. They all want to go lay on the beach. I said I was. A, I told. I told our boss I was going to do one about being a friendly and loving teacher, and he just laughed so hard that I don't think that I should do it. <laughs> mm. Well, just for you, the next one here says board, B O A R D, board with history. No, not that. That's uh, that's that's hogwash. Joe actually uses board board games in his class. I do. And the biggest one is, of course, diplomacy. Bleh. But. I will say that watching the kids play diplomacy is a very interesting. It teaches exercise. World War One very well. <laughs> I don't, I don't, it teaches. It teaches just, the entangling alliances and all right. That. It teaches that you can't just go out and conquer the world. It's never been done successfully for any long period of time. I mean, I guess the Romans came close, but even they. About Alexander. Oh, he got stopped in India, or he went home. The civilized world. Because well, right. back then they weren't civilized, I guess. Oh yeah, China wasn't civilized back then. <laughs> All right, here's superhero campaigns. Grand Cosmic Adventure versus Gritty Street Level Justice. That's the problem with any superhero game. You have a guy who's Batman. Woo! And then another guy who's Superman. How do you make them work together? I have no idea. They can't, because that's why superhero role-playing games don't work. Oh, Joe, here's a session. Ask Andy anything, the guy from Looney Labs. So you can go and say, why does Flux stink? <laughs> why do you guys all anything? look like you're stoned? <laughs> no. 
I, I think it'd be interesting to talk to him. I, I actually plan to interview him later this year because I interview a few select people. Pretty much anybody who says yes. The next one, games for math and science. That just interests me. Here's another board with history. Must be a pretty, pretty bad thing. Oh, Joe, this one's for you. Starfleet Battles Tactics Seminar. The game with a billion rules. Starfleet Battles is cool. I mean, in fact, that's on my list this year, and it's not on my top five, but probably number six or seven. I want to spend at least three or four hours over with the Starfleet Battle guys so that I can go through the game again so that I can try to get myself grounded in it because... That was my birthday present for Joe last year. I bought him the, the Master Rulebook. Yeah. Of course, I had to since I had given him the game without a copy of the rules in, in it. In the trade, right? <laughs> you get me. Well, I read the rules, and they, they, they bored me to tears. So maybe you, I just threw them away. Threw them away. I, I don't throw rules away, though. You probably use them for cat litter or something. Yeah, well. <laughs> and here, uh, the Monopoly Q&A session. <laughs> <laughs> what, what could you possibly ask? <laughs> well, why do people play this? <laughs> well, I'm, no, no, okay, look, I'm not trying to get in the Monopoly bashing session. <laughs> but why would you go ask questions about it? Hey, I already bought, I'm already signed up for all the Monopoly games at Origins. <laughs> Which ones? Are you playing Barbieopoly? Barbie, I'm playing Ghettoopoly. Ah, I'm sure. Okay. Well, that's a section on seminars. So now we'll have to move on to uh, our third top thing to go see. Mine. Go ahead. You go ahead. No, after you. All right. I'll go. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> Number three for me is the miniatures hall. I just, you got to go to the miniatures hall and you just got to look around. It's its astounding. Especially last, last year we went and they had all the stuff for the Lord of the Rings because of all the movies were just out. Amazing the man the, the amount of man hours that have gone into building the, the 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 terrain and the painting of the miniatures it's just it's just amazing if you don't like that if you don't even if you're not a if you're not a, if you hate war games and you hate miniatures you still need to go in and just look at it because it's just it's just amazing yeah I agree I'm not a miniatures gamer but man I want it to be after going into these rooms yeah it's just so cool it is they had the the the, the siege of Minas Tirith. Uh, the they Gondor had, had Siege, Helm's Deep. Helm's Helm's Deep. Deep. It was, they had futuristic cities with they had, collapsed buildings. They had all kinds of scales and arenas. They had naval games. They had spaceships. Yeah, they boats. had outer space games. They had a lot of World War II games. They had different World War II. They had the micro stuff. They had the huge scale stuff. That I got involved in a D-Day landing game. I was a platoon of American soldiers, and we were all dead before we got even to the wire. <laughs> but it was it was fun. Yeah, I, I don't know if I'll play any of those games, but I sure like to look at them. It's yeah, beautiful. I, I, I spent half a day in there just kind of wandering around. My number three thing that you should do is independent publishers. There are a lot of people who come there who are selling their only game. And I would say that at Origins, your chance of finding these people having a good game is one in three, maybe. Because a yeah. lot of them aren't that good. The people who their mother and father said, hey good game. I hear a phone. Is that your phone or my phone? Hey, it's my phone. And, okay, well, why Joe answers the phone. Okay, well, you should probably answer that and, and tell her, or I'll answer it. Um, <laughs> um, anyway, okay, we're getting a little off topic here. Independent <laughs> publishers. We why don't need, you tell them who that was? It was our babysitter for <laughs> us going to see we Star Wars We were supposed again. to take our wives on a date tonight, and we, we had a babysitter lined up. And it seems like instead we're on the radio. <laughs> well, okay, but we're not on the radio. There's other details Joe, involved. Yeah, the, we we could not complete the thing that we were going to do, so we are taking our wives on a date. And so we stood a up. We days. stood up our babysitter. Yeah, well, she, she needs to know as soon as possible so that she can go see Star Wars herself. Well, you're the one. All right, I will I will call her. Hang on. Okay. <laughs> no, I, Meanwhile, Joe will give you his <laughs> his take on something. <laughs> all right, Joe, it's all yours. It's all mine. Oh no, I'm nervous. Here, here, you can use my phone. Just do the last call numbers. Yes, we're in Korea. We have very fancy cell phones. Anyway, I'll talk about I'll talk about Star or this uh, this phenomenon on Board Game Geek with all the werewolf games. I've had some guys that have hey. asked me, Hey, Mr. Speak to your mom? <laughs> Mr. Vassal, your microphone's still on. Your microphone's on. <laughs> Anyway, wow, well, that's a technical difficulty. Anyway, um, I had some guys write me and want to know more details about these werewolf games. It's 
the classic werewolf game that you can play with the cards or in the party games, and you do it on the internet, on these forums, and I can still hear Tom. Anyway, you do it on the forums, and you just, um, there's different people assigned to different characters. If you've ever played werewolf before, you'll you'll know what I'm talking about, but one person, and yeah, we, I think we already talked about this, but I'll do it anyway, because we're having difficult difficulties, technical difficulties. Anyway, there's usually three werewolves of about 17 or 18 people. There's three werewolves. Did you call? Yeah. Am I, am I on now? Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? I can hear you, Tom. I forgot. I'm wearing a wireless mic, so <laughs> I forgot I was still wearing it when I went away because I, I took the headphones off. Whoa. So I just assumed that you couldn't hear me anymore. But was there a sound there? Yeah, you walk right in front of the air conditioner. Interesting. This is not going to be one of our better shows, is it? <laughs> well, let's get back on track. Uh, anyway, play Werewolf. We've already talked about it, and I had no idea what to talk about. See, that just shows that Tom's the brains of this show. <laughs> you start talking about Werewolf? Yeah. Well, maybe we'll get into a Werewolf game at Origins. That's a good idea. I would like to do that. If, if, if you are involved in a Werewolf game at all, I had a hard time finding them. I would find them after they had already started. Yeah, then you can't join them. So if you're doing a Werewolf game... Come find me. I will join. I will definitely join because uh, we'll probably both get lynched. But <laughs> yeah, meta gaming. All right, here's our next section of the book. I will probably just skip right through this quickly. Is collectible card games. We do like collectible card games to a degree. The problem with collectible card games is they're usually very complicated. Nah, I shouldn't say complicated. They're they're simple, but you have to read the text on every card. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> they're text dependent. Right, and they're also two players, which is usually a turnoff in our situation because we usually have at least three. Mm -hmm. And yes, many of them claim that they can be played with more than two, but then it's just two people ganging up on one. So we're turning through the pages here. Oh, look, we're at 55, we're going through. We just skipped all of the collectible card game stuff. Oh, LARPs. <laughs> oh, man. No. Uh, we'll just mention that. I would like to play a LARP sometime, a live action role playing game. Oh, are you a werewolf is LARPs? Hmm. But I, I would like to play a live-action role-playing game that was like a diplomatic one, where you actually pretended that you were a diplomat from a country, kind of like MUN, Model United Nations. All right. But I've never had a chance to do that. I think next time we have technical difficulties, I'm just going to start asking geek questions. I'll just go to geek questions and start answering. Well, so, you know. <laughs> we apologize for that. You can just fast-forward through it, though. <laughs> now yeah. we're at the miniature section. So I guess... We'll, we'll talk a little bit about this. There's a lot of people interested in miniatures. Hero Clicks is a pretty fun game. Yeah, it's cheese. It's all right. Did you ever even play it? I played it with uh, you guys, yeah, at your house. And that's right. When I, Joe, Joe played Hero Clicks like a week before I made the fateful decision of no more miniatures ever. <laughs> and I got rid of all my Mage Knight. I got rid of all my Hero You had a lot of Mage Knight. I got rid of uh, all my 40, Warhammer 40K. So... But Joe's more of miniatures than I am, although he's mm. a select type of miniatures. These pre-painted miniatures aren't that big a deal for him. No, maybe I'll bring my 40K army. They're having a, war, a 40K Origins event. I don't I think you would, though. <laughs> I don't want to lug it back to America. Yeah. But So there's not a whole lot we can say about miniatures, though, except, like we already said, there's some really cool miniature stuff. Ace of Aces, they're doing a, a Isn't game. Isn't Flames of War some, Is that the one that you played? Yeah, Flames, Flames of Wars. No, Flames of Wars is a 15 millimeter uh, World War II game that is kind of controversial within the war gamers because it's kind of you. You would laugh at this time. It's kind of controversial because it's really easy. <laughs> it's very uh, Eurowish, not Eurowish, but very. Um, how do I say it? Axis and Allies-ish. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's no. It's just very simplified. Uh, it's you move, I move. You move, I move. I and, move, you move. And most of your serious miniature guys and your war gamers don't like that. Hmm. And so this Flames of War doesn't really appeal to the upper crust of war gamers. Well, I must say, I don't like the you move, I move thing either. That's yeah, why I don't uh, like well, Warhammer 40K. I don't like the fact that but, you know, we that, all shoot. I, I, I don't like that part about 40K either, but I like to play 40K knowing that. You, if you know that and you base your strategy off of that, other than the devastating first turn, it's not that bad of a game. It's fun. I guess. Hey, this is a decision games, an advertisement for isn't this the game that you just recently reviewed on our show? Yeah, I just did that. Lightning Midway. It's a good, good game. It's advertised here for twenty dollars. Twenty. It was twenty-five when I bought mine. I think. Is it worth twenty dollars? It's worth twenty dollars. I'm gonna pick up the light. Is Lightning D-Day on there for sale? Or just Midway? I see Midway. Uh, I don't see anything else. Well, I'll pick up D-Day. What about this? Uh, 
magazine, Strategy and Tactics. Have you ever read it? I have, and I, I would like to get a, a subscription, or get it, not a subscription, but I like to pick up some issues that I don't own. Oh, six issues for 20 bucks, that's not too bad. No, it's pretty good. It's not the, the grand old days of the of the general and SPI and things, but, you know, we're trying. And here's more pictures of the the miniatures. There's the section where you can paint your own. Painting miniatures is a horrible thing. Hey, paint your own. Should I take all my stuff from Camelot Legends? And you can get some little kid to paint it. <laughs> get some kid to paint it for me. Give him, give him, give him some generic tickets or something. <laughs> This episode is brought to you by Tenki Games. Chang Chang combines strategy and fun. Play with pieces that accurately reproduce the real Great Wall of China and build it on the board. Test your strategy skills and enjoy the fine graphics that catapult you into ancient China. To learn more about Chang Chang, go to www.tenkigames.com. Here's some new game, Ragnarok. It's a miniatures game. Hmm. So then we speed through all the miniature pages, and now we reach role-playing. Some people don't go to Origins because they say, oh, there's so much role-playing and CCGs and stuff. No. But even if you took all the role-playing out, all the miniatures out, all the collectible card games out, and there was just board games, there would still be a lot. Hundreds and hundreds of people. Yeah, so, I mean, I think Origins is cool because you're not stuck with one thing. I heard Gen Con's got more role-playing even than what this does. Yeah, and Gen Con just doesn't work in our schedules ever. Mm, no. And Columbus is a better city for me to go to than Indianapolis, I think, is where Gen Con is. Yeah. So. I can actually right. go to both, but I don't think that it works out for schedule. Well, if I was in America, I'd go to every conference I could without financially going broke. Ah, ah, woohoo, hooray. We are now at traditional and tabletop games. What is this picture? Is that a kid playing jacks with some kind of dog? Or something? It looks like it's a kid playing marbles, marbles yeah. with an alien. But the alien looks like he's going to eat the boy if the boy <laughs> loses or wins. That boy looks he's a little dead. desperate. That's actually not a bad piece of artwork. I think I would I think I would put that up in my secret area of the house that my wife lets me put my type of pictures up in. <laughs> okay. Maybe. Well, don't don't laugh. You have your war room. That's true. And that's yours. And then You're jealous of the rest work. of the house is your wife's. Yes. I, I'm not jealous of the war room. I'm jealous of the room. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right. So this is the section I guess we'll spend the longest time on. We have maybe another 20 minutes in the show. Uh, traditional and tabletop <laughs> games. We played a lot of good games last year. I really liked walking through and seeing people and, and learning new games or seeing a game that I wasn't interested in too much, but at least looked pretty cool. You were, you were in that room a lot. The dealer's room? No, 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 in the the open gaming area. Yeah, I wasn't, well, I, I walked all over the Rio? Was it Rio Grande or wherever it was? The only place I didn't walk into too much were some of the small rooms where there was role-playing groups, and I would, like, peek in, and a role-playing guy would be like, uh, no, you meet the dragon, and all that. Like, oh. And then when, you, when you open the door. And I was afraid to walk in. Don't forget when you open the door, the B.O. comes flying out. <laughs> Joe really has these stereotypes <laughs> down. But look, Joe, it's the <laughs> Apples to Apples National Tournament. Oh, my goodness. How could you even do that? I love Apples to Apples. But a national tournament? Yes, what is I the, agree. What is the competitive nature of Apples to Apples? It's so... Depends it's a party on the game. You could fix it. You could cheat. Right? I don't know if you could cheat, but you could try and pick cards that you knew you didn't wouldn't go you wouldn't, with the. You're right. You would pick the ones thinking. Try not to pick the ones who you knew would score points. Because some people are pretty clever with their answers, and after a while, you're like, well, they want to put down such a stupid answer, so I'll pick this. I don't know. I don't think it's a tournament game. Puffing Billy tournament? Real games. You know, why don't we play more train games? Do you think the theme's just not that interesting to you and me? I'm talking about you and me. Personally. I don't think that we've ever actually had a chance to play a real train game. Well, I, I've, I've never actually played a real train game. You well, know, Sam, I'm not talking about Union Pacific or... You're talking like the 1800 series. Right. I've never played one. Sam and I... Well, okay. We played Russian Rails. Russian Rails, I would say that's a real train game. But I think that's even light for, for what these guys So I hear. Well, Sam Healy, a friend of ours, and I was at a that Dive Dice mm -hmm. Cafe, no, Duta Cafe, and I got out 1856, I think, mm -hmm. and I said eight hours. But... <laughs> I, there were so many pieces in the box. It was, I don't know. Was it the same thing as Russian Rails, where you had to ship cargo? And no, all? you buy shares in companies and then you build track. It's kind of like Age of Steam, where you build track, but you're buying shares in the companies. I don't know. It looks fairly complicated. I'm willing to try one if, if someone's willing to teach me. 
I mean, there's some devout followers. I mean, do you see the guys walking around with their little conductor outfits on and stuff? The little, little train Yeah, hats. and you know, we laugh at that, but it's, I, I don't know. Hey. It's, it's their genre. These guys are probably the same guys who got the electric trains at home in their basements. Now, the Sailor's Gaton World Qualifier is at Origins, and that is a big deal. There was a lot of people involved in that last year. Yeah, but I you, saw you, lots of settlers. I, yeah. I feel the same thing as about this as I do the other, as about apples to apples. How can you have a, a world qualifier? There's no better player at Settlers of Catan than another person. <clears throat> I'm better than you. No, you're not. It's just a random game. Joe, the truth is, except for maybe war games, I'm better at you than every game. <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> All right, do we need to pull out the session reports here? No, we need to do session that. reports. We've, well, since you've already listened to episode five, you'll know that Joe, <laughs> Joe wiped the floor with me in that se- in, a, in a couple sessions ago. Oh no. man, no, I don't know. I mean, seriously, seriously, Tom, how can you have a? There's so much of the game depends on luck. Mm, but there's a lot of strategy. I I would guarantee that a total newbie could win that tournament, and it not be that far. No, far not the fetched. tournament. He could win a game, but he wouldn't win the tournament. Why? What is this strategy that you're talking about? Well, let's go interview the the, the new the person who wins and say, "Are you a newbie?" <laughs> well, oh, he knew how to trade two well, wood look, for one clay. They have a domain tournament. Now that's not luck. I would agree. Domain's a better game than settlers. Aren't you tempted to even join that? I am, but I like Lone Hurts better. Here's the thing about tournaments, though. They take too much time. Yeah, and you have to play the same game like three or four times in a row, if 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 if, if you win. Right. Which so. which I would so. <laughs> Joe is better at domain than I am. I will give him that. <laughs> what was the... Uh, oh, I forgot what I was talking about. Oh, well. How about the Steve Jackson Games Room? Oh, will boy. you go in there? No. Well, yeah, I will. I actually, I, I like Steve Jackson Games. I'm giving you a joke in there. I like Steve Jackson. I like Glurps. I like um, I like the old stuff. Do you like Frag? I like Frag. It's very light. It's a good... Do you like Dino Hunt? You haven't played that one. No, I haven't played it. Do you like Dork uh, Munchkin? It's good once. <laughs> but your once is already over. Yeah, it's true. But they got like like ten. I guess you could play Space Munch. They got once. ten versions of it, don't they? What's the other thing I like? I like the uh, ogre. Wow, Starfleet Battles, they say, is playing hourly. So I guess you'll get your game in. No, they 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 were there all four days. They were going to master tournaments. What's this Federation and Empire game? It's a huge grand level Starfleet Battles game. Rather than like ship versus ship, it's it's fleets versus fleets. And when different fleets engage, then the game moderators will take X Romulan player and X Federation player and sit over here and they play a battle that represents the one battle in the big campaign map. It's kind of like the Memoir 44 of eight people. Interesting. Yeah. How about diplomacy? You, you know, signed up for diplomacy last year. And then I you, did, and you... I jumped out because it just takes too much time. I'm a, I'm a huge diplomacy player, but I just don't want to devote that much time. You've only got so much time at Can Origins. diplomacy be a, a viable tournament? Yeah. Okay. Because there's people who are better at manipulating people than other people. They also you have would a, not go very far in a diplomacy tournament. <laughs> I would probably come back and say, I hate Origins! <laughs> how about a choir tournament? You know how I feel about a choir. Yeah, Axis and Allies D-Day tournament. Just say, as long as you get the Germans every turn, you'll be okay. Now is it the Allies? What do you say? Yeah, the Allies are, are guaranteed to win every game. I disagree. Oh, okay. You have the right to be wrong. You have the wrong to be right. <laughs> uh, Origins Trivia Challenge. Ooh, ooh! Is it trivia about Origins? What does it say? Blah, 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 blah. Eight hours of intensive information retrieval? <laughs> How is that fun? Oh, my goodness. This is like Trivial Pursuit. No, thank you. Uh, trivia is not that important. I mean, I guess for Ken Jennings it was. But, yeah. Uh, okay. Well, moving on. I guess let's let's break here and do our number two, number two thing. For me, the number two thing. Same as mine. Oh, with the same thing? Yeah, I, mean, I got the web page. Well, we mentioned all, this in I our got, first episode. I got the web page all called up. Ready? Well, just get the website. <laughs> www.northmarket.com. <laughs> it has nothing to do with gaming at all. But it is some good food. <laughs> yeah, it's a North Market. It's uh. It's, I, it's we two did not blocks. see very many people there from Oregon. No, we didn't. We saw a couple. But not many. I think most people don't know about it. Man, it's the best it's kept great. secret in Ohio, man. And it's not that expensive. No, because it's like a supermarket. I mean, it's... Because they're like, oh, $6 for a sandwich? But it's a sandwich. <laughs> it's, as Joe would say, a manly man sandwich. <laughs> a manly sandwich, yeah. Real no, men eat sandwiches. It's, it's two... It's, if you go out the main side doors, 
you know what? Tell you the best way to find a place is to hunt down me or Tom at Origins, and we'll walk you over there if you buy me a sandwich. <laughs> Good. Okay. Anyone who buys me a sandwich, I'll go over there. I'll even do it five times a day. <laughs> no, just ask us, and we'll give you directions. Or just ask any of the locals where the North Market is. Man, it's great. It's great, 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 great yeah. food. It's and really it tells you differently. It's lying and needs to be smacked it's really, in the head. It's really good. Okay. Uh, oh, tickets ride championship. I feel pretty comfortable with that game. You think you can win it? No. Why? I don't. don't you always win online? No. I haven't played online in a long time. Uh, oh, Rio Grande is having Iron Man's tournament uh, in the Cavs gaming room, which is a little strange. See, I would have been tempted by that, but Rio Grande is having open gaming. For free. And it's yeah, not... but the, you can play free in the, the the war room if you got ribbon. No, you have to you have buy an Iron Man ribbon. No, you have to have the war room ribbon. It says right here, Iron Man ribbon. Oh, well, I don't know. For $15. So that's another ribbon you can get. What is the Iron Man? It lets you play 52 hours of tournament games of Rio Grande games. No, thank you. Well, I love Rio Grande games, but I don't know if I can play them for 20 hours. Oh, thanks. Ice House Tournament, a wham -thon, Tom Wham Games, Killer Bunnies game. Where's the Twilight Imperium 3 championship? You probably have it there somewhere. <laughs> so, I'm sorry, did I interrupt our North Market talk? No, that's over with. Oh, North Market rocks. <laughs> Go there. All right, here's all the events of board games. This is something that... Ah, this brings back the whole thing of events. When you go to Origins, you buy these, these little coins or tickets. It's one of the two. You get a ticket if you're going to a specific event. So right. if you're going to, and then you have, yeah. let's say here, you're going to play Lord of the Ring, War of the Ring at 3 o'clock on Thursday. Mm -hmm. You need to buy a ticket. It, reser you, it reserves you a slot in that game. It costs you $3 and reserves you a slot in a game. Or once you get to Origins, you can buy these generic coins. And that's if they don't have enough people for the game, which is almost always. Mm -hmm. Then someone who has one of these coins can join the slot. Right. I guess it goes down to your your philosophy. I mean, what your philosophy? But what what do you want to do at the convention? I guess if you really really want to play a game, like last year, I really wanted to play Manhattan against Andrew Seifert, so I bought a ticket. And Joe really wanted to play that Kingmaker. Yeah. Game. And, and it ended up being people got in that game for free anyway. Well, they didn't get. They had to pay with their generic tickets, but. And then Joe and I each went and bought. I bought like 30 generic tickets, and I, I used I, like three. I ended up giving mine away. There was so much free gaming. Free gaming? Why pay? Because that's how Origins makes money. That's how they keep the show going. Hooray. Oh, so DW Trip would say <laughs> DW that you, Trip. DW Trip is a local game owner who always local promotes, game store, yeah. Local game store owner who always promotes brick and, brick and mortar kind of guy. Promotes, you know, supporting him. So I guess by buying these generic tickets, you support Origins. No, I didn't. maybe we're just an anomaly because. Maybe a lot of people just, they like being signed up for particular games at particular hours. I just I, like winging it, just walking around and jumping in games. I'm a big fan of winging it, too, because I, it was, it's really annoying. What happened last year was I was signed up for some events, and then I saw or heard about something really cool, and I couldn't go do it because I was already signed up for something else. Exactly. And I'd rather say, ooh, that's cool, let me do it. Yep. And I don't think I ever was at a spot where they said, I'm sorry. But only if you're pre-signed up. Now this year I, I was the miniatures. If you okay, that's for board. And the miniatures, the you had to have the. Uh, uh oh, Tom, they're coming to get you. No, oh no. <laughs> only in Korea. I don't know how well they can hear it. Oh, through your mic. I haven't. I don't listen to my own shows, so I don't know how the background sounds sound. <laughs> you can hear this stuff. No. Oh. My wife. My wife tells me. Anyway. Um, at the miniatures games, especially the big fancy ones like we talked about with the uh, Lord of the Rings games, those tickets were sold out way in advance, the people to play in those. So if you want to get in some of those fancy stuff, it's a high-profile stuff. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll take that. Yeah. If, you, if, if it's high-profile... <laughs> it sounds like me. I'm the one who stumbles over words, not if you. If it's high-profile, then sign up for it. But otherwise, I don't know. Maybe you like a structured life. I like winging it. <laughs> well, I, no, I like structure in some things. Our shows are usually pretty structured, not my, this one. My wife likes structure. She's trying to plan out our whole summer, like every day, by the hour. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, honey. <laughs> well, I'm trying to plan out our week. 
Maybe. Nothing's going right. Yeah. Well, we are recording the show. Is Maybe, it? Yeah. Is it? Joe, it's not recording. <laughs> okay. I would, I would and, smack you with this mouse, man. Right and then the there. last couple pages in the book talk about traditional games. Apparently, Monopoly is one of them. A Monopoly tournament. Mm. It's organized and run by Ken Cowrie, a Monopoly guru. He's an Origins guest of honor. <laughs> and we'll be providing seminars on strategy. Is he, this, is he the same as this guy that... But who cares? I was just looking at what Dirk was talking about with that lady who was like the self-proclaimed game owner, the one that had all the Monopoly copies. Did you read, Did you listen to that Geek Speak? Yeah, Dirk was a little annoyed that... <laughs> they misquoted him. They misquoted him. I, I got a quote. Dirk called, and he had a quote for the show. What? He says, your show is much better than ours. Did he? Yeah, that's, Dirk, a, that's we, our... we appreciate you telling us that our show is better than and yours. We quoted you we're, on it. We're, we're not trying to be in a competition. <laughs> I guess it just comes naturally. It's because we're selling products and we're, we're in a big competition. Is that what it is? Is it? No, I mean, there's like room for like five more shows on board games. Yeah, there's just I would not love it, out there. If, you're, if you want to do a show, I'll listen to it. Do you listen to uh, the guy who does a blog by himself? I have a few times, but it's just not as interesting as just the guy by himself. No. I like Dirk and Aldi. Yeah, I do like Dirk and Aldi. Geek Speak is a great show. I like Part Dirk. of our inspiration. Dirk is cool. All he does all the work. Hello, everybody. <laughs> I love it. Hey, we went through the whole book. So let's do our number one thing that people should see. All right. My number one thing you should see is I'll give a little plug for the War Room. Cabs, uh, Columbus area board gamers, they're running the War Room. Come over and see the War Room. Even if you're not a war gamer, just come in there and peek in. And look at the old Grogger and sitting around their monster games. And you can make fun of us because we're all going to have, have forceps using... Uh, using forceps to move counters around huge maps and you know these guys are going to have these charts out and you're going to look at it and it's look like ancient Greek and you're going to have no idea but at least you can say you saw a monster game okay. I think it's cool I even went in there and it doesn't cost money to go in and right. look at least so go and check it out and then maybe you want to you want to stay in play and, there's, there's, and if you get a war room ribbon the, the cabs has a huge game collection if you have a war room ribbon you can play any game that's in their closet for free you buy the ribbon on day one, and then if you're bored and you want to do open gaming, you can just go in there and you can do open gaming all day long. Origins does, the only allows open gaming in certain areas of the place, and, and that's one of the places that you can do it as long as you Yeah, have and it is a nice, I mean, if, if, if you don't like the big Craddock convention hall type atmosphere, it's a smaller room, has maybe more of a homey feeling. Smaller room like the size of a basketball court maybe. Not, yeah, about the size of a basketball court. Mm, maybe. I, I don't remember exactly. But yeah, it's it's it, it's a neat it's a neat place to check out. For me, the number one attraction is a dealer room. Don't miss it. Go in there, and these people are dying <laughs> to talk to you, because yeah. you're a possible consumer. They will sit there and they will explain their game that they designed or that they produce. It's really fun. It's like walking into Oz, <laughs> the, I, em the Emerald City. I just have so much fun in there. And just because you never heard of something doesn't mean it might not be good. Yeah. I stop and look at everything. It's exciting. And they got the weirdest things you could buy in there too. Yeah, Klingon daggers, and uh, paintings. Okay, I'm not recommending that you buy that sort of. Every nonsense. kind of die you could they had dice and. But all the dice, they have loaded dice, they have blue dice, pink dice. They have dice so small you can barely see them. Huge <laughs> dice, dice. Oh, man, it's dice heaven. Yeah, there's a lot of dice. I have a whole drawer full of dice now, and I don't even know what I use half of them for. <laughs> you don't. Oh, and we and if Planary Games is there. By Angela Kincaid. Buy a dice tower. Go buy one of their dice. It's called the Dice Boot. It's even really though, nice. Even though it's not as cool looking as other dice towers, it's a clear plastic it's cheap. thing. It's cheap and it works great. Yeah. It, it, we both have one. We, I have two. You have two. Okay. Oh, but that, that's how good it is. And in fact, some of my students have asked me to buy them one. And because it's it, it folds up flat when they sell it, it's, it's easy to ship. very, very portable. Yeah. So... That's get, my number one thing is a dealer room. So do you get kicked back from Planary Games for that little sell there? No, I, I got a dice boot. So you get another free one now? I, I don't think so. <laughs> I, I don't ever do... I, I don't... You don't do plugs? I don't do plugs to get free stuff. I I may get some I thought free... that's why you wrote reviews. Well... <laughs> no, I like to write the reviews. I wrote them before I got anything free. In fact... What was my first review? I think it was... My, my first reviews are totally different than my style now. Because before uh, you came out with a patented style? Well, some people really dislike me writing reviews the same way every time. Other people like it that way. 
I, I'm, I like it that way, so that's the way I'm going to do it. What was, Although, that, what was that thing that Bob was saying I should do with you to make fun of your reviews? Remember he's at his house playing games? I don't know, but... <laughs> oh, well, we, we are going to talk in a, in a backwards episode, which is one you've already heard about. Well, we'll talk about that later. But it's a, remember, you're going to talk to me about the authority, of, leading authority on board games. Oh, that's right. The world's leading authority on board games. Yeah, what a yes. bunch of bullshit. The world's leading authority on board games. <laughs> and you had to prove it. So hearing me here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we're about to close up our show here, um, but we just wanted to talk, just give some brief summaries of Origins, and we're not affiliated with Gamma at all. In no. fact, I think we've we've given a lot of <coughs> criticism to them in these two shows. We've mentioned. We don't sure. like their awards. We said the good and the bad. Yeah. And so, well, they're not... It can't be that bad. We're going. We apologize that we can't tell you about Gen Con. We can't tell you about Gathering Your Friends. We can't tell you about Essen. But we can tell you about Origins. And maybe our experience has been totally different than yours. In that case, you need to come find us and play games with us. Yeah. And they're easy to pick out. Tom's a big, tall guy with uh, an Amish-looking beard. <laughs> Thank you. But that is true. I can't grow the hair on my face. <laughs> Excuse I, me. I, I, I try so much, it just doesn't work. I'm the really suave, good-looking guy. And if you look for him, you won't find him. But if you look for the punk, <laughs> you, you'll find Joe. We're gonna, I'm, I'm going to take my name tag on. I'll probably have a hat on that says something about Tom Vassell being my little girl or something. Yeah, hopefully we'll get uh, <laughs> shirts made up about our, our show. <laughs> Which is something else we forgot to do. Uh, we're supposed to do it today, but I guess we could do it tomorrow. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Anyway, we're really glad you listened to this show. Next, uh, if, if you don't like this... For unformatted version, don't worry. This we is have, a temporary thing. Our next two shows in July will be back to our format, and then in, starting in August, we're going to do some actual, at least one episode about how cool Origins 2005 was and right. all the things you missed. And, and since uh, it will be much more fresh in our minds, we'll, we'll be giving you more details. I still want to see if anyone's on Geek Chat when we're doing the show. Oh, is anyone on it right now? Let's find out. Grognards. Grognards. All right, well, let's see. Oh, okay, <laughs> right before we end the show, we'll ask, we'll tell Grognards that we're online and see if he has anything to say that's actually uh, allowable and a G-rated show. <laughs> He's probably not even there. We'll just say, uh, here, I'll, I'll get online too. Okay, so now we're, we're both going to be on <laughs> Grognards at the same time. This guy lives on Geek Chat. And... <laughs> okay, so uh, I'm saying, Grognads... We are on the air. We're hey, he's there. One of our shows right now. Right now, do you have a comment? <laughs> so can I talk in caps and red and everything else? Yeah, it sounds like. And and we will. Okay, uh, maybe not. Well, Simon, well, I, he, I see that you did it on your screen. Oh, there it is. Can you guys submit another listening medium for your shows? Uh, what does that mean? Like what? Well, I think he's talking about how we already have MP3 and we have real audio. What else would he want? What other mediums are there? There's stone tablet. Oh, I remember. He asked me this in another chat. He asked us to transcribe our shows. Transcribe said, our shows? no show. way. He said, get your students to do it. I said, that's too much work. To transcribe <laughs> five minutes of the show would be a huge amount. I mean, you talk hundreds of words a minute. I can't seem to get them to work properly with the MP3. Oh, was well, he the only person who's having a... <laughs> what did game... I, I think he's talking about heat speak. Well, anyway, that's pretty much it. We'll, we'll continue talking to Gragners as, as the, uh, the show Peter's out here. But one more time, this is Tom Vassell. And my name is Joe Steadman. And you can reach us at TomVassell at gmail.com. Joe Stedman at gmail.com. And maybe by the time you hear this show, we'll have Dice Tower at gmail, the Dice Tower at gmail.com, too. We're, we're working on that. We, we, we can sign that up real easy. I'm sure. No, we'll, we better do it now because... No, no, no. By the time it shows out, we'll, we'll already have yeah, it. Yeah, we'll beat him to the punch. And if not, we will get the Dice Tower, too, at gmail.com. What is... Ah, uh, he's still, he's not. Grog, you dropped the ball, man. You had a chance to give us a good quote, and you didn't say anything. Oh, well. Here we go. You've been listening to the Dice Tower. We'll see you next time. Well, a lot of interesting things in that episode. And it's interesting on how my own opinions have ch since changed since then. A couple things of interest. One, we talked about a game named Lensman. And we, and we had a hard time finding it in the Board Game Geek database or even pictures of the game. It's still not 
ranked by anyone. And, you know, the guy who sold it was there at the 2007 Origins. I went and talked to him, and he told me what a great, innovative war game it was. Really didn't have a chance to show me much of it. And I looked at it, and it, <laughs> it just didn't look that great. Um, uh, looks can be deceiving, but you know, I guess he's still trying, so maybe someday we'll hear about this game. The Origins auctions have changed quite a bit uh, since we talked about them here, in, in the sense that I don't even recommend at all going to the Origins auction. Maybe there's something you're interested in, but it's not. I don't think it's worth it to sit through three hours waiting for them to randomly select your item. However, they have since got a store-type addition to their auction, and there's some pretty good stuff there sometimes, but you really need to be there right when that store opens each day. So if you go to Origins, get there as soon as that store opens. Then I really I really went off a of Monopoly in this episode. In fact, if you listen to the episode last week, episode 108, where we or was it 109? I don't remember now. But the episode where we just talked about Monopoly, and Sam accused me of changing my opinion on it, and I, and, uh, I, I guess I have been waffling on my opinion on, on Monopoly more. And, and we'll talk about this more in the next episode. But I was kind of harsh towards Ken here. But, you know, after – when I went to Origins, I had a brief period of time to talk to him. And then I was able to interview him. And, you know, he really was a very gracious person who talked all about Monopoly and just what his strategies were and how he was – you know, just – it was an amazing thing. He really kind of won me back over to Monopoly. In my interview, I asked him if he had ever played Ticket to Ride and other games that he had in, and he didn't seem interested. But, you know, since then, he's he's got a profile on BoardGameGeek.com. Some people really criticized him in his review, but, you know, he stuck with his guns. He still loves Monopoly, and he's got me interested in trying it out again. You know, maybe, I don't know, half a year ago, I played a game of it, and I was really – no, it's probably a year ago now. I was really just demoralized by my bad experience with the game, but – I'm continually fascinated by it. I really think there's a good game in there. But I have to give Ken Curry some real props. He was a, a gentleman uh, during the interview and did a good job, and he keeps people interested in Monopoly. And then uh, finally in this podcast, I talked about how there needs to be a lot more uh, podcasts about gaming. There definitely is now. I think we may have reached our threshold because there really isn't that many people listening to these podcasts. Uh, we're one of the bigger ones, and... We have, you know, 2,500 listeners maybe per episode, and that's a lot of people. I mean, and I love you all. Don't get, don't get me wrong, but it certainly isn't a huge amount, and when there's people trying to listen to seven or eight of these podcasts, I think that may be the limit. I, may, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe people have time for 30 podcasts. Who knows? And that's about wrapping it up for this time, and I really appreciate it. I hope you join us next week. This is Tom Vassell. I'll see you all later. Thanks for joining us today. This episode's proud sponsor is Tenki Games, publishers of Chang Chang and the line of fine board games which include Daimyo, Shark Park, Crumble, Snake Lake, and much more to come. Discover Tenki Games products by visiting www.tenkigames.com. Join us next week for episode 109, in which we talk about our top 10 Cosmos two-player games. Until then, I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been listening to The Dice Tower, 